So, so, so this, this floating horse, I've got a sneaking doubt that you really, really risk a verse when trying to protect this from Mulla Pariyar. <laughs> Where this whole thing... <laughs> <laughs> the, we had three flats, right? Mm -hmm. Thought about it and said, you know, we need to build a house which can sustain the floods that we get. Like Noah Sakh. Absolutely, yeah. you so said when it. when there yeah. is a flood, so it will float. Absolutely. Up. So, the, so uh, you know, I'm calling it Danny's Ark. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would be the person in the Arabic Sea. Danny's not enough. Danny's <laughs> Ark is, Ark Ark is floating in the Arabic Sea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Anupa. I'm an architect based in Bangalore and I have a firm called Anoop Designs. Almost two thirds of the site was the land part and maybe one third was in the water. That opened up a big opportunity for us. So we thought why not have a house on the land, also a floating house, which can move around the water if needed or anchored near the mangroves. My name is Vergis Daniel. I'm the CEO of Grand Solutions. We are in the business of helping organizations prevent their projects getting delayed and cost overrun. When I build this floating house, I would have preferred to build my typical uh, Kerala style house there. The structural engineers advised me that it cannot take the wind load. So we had to make the shape of the house, you know, which is aerodynamic so that the wind just passes over and it always pushes the house into the lake. We designed it as a shape of the egg so that in the middle of whatever wind comes in, it will not get affected. We started exploring new materials and that's how we came to this self-supporting art system which does not need truss work at all. So that's how we came to this shape. The shape was informed by the material. Then there were multiple options. You could do FRP, GRP and all that, which is the fiberglass thing. Then, then it would become very expensive. As I said, one of the major thing for me was that I had to make it very cost effective. I chose the option to use the galvalium sheets, which is shrink fit. Since these were interlocking panels, leakages was also taken care of. The water absolutely will not come down into the interiors. Yeah, but insulating it and having a clean underside was again a challenge for which we had to go for glass wool in between and gypsum panels uh, that would curve to give the curve shape. We definitely didn't want to go for the boxy uh, structure. We wanted to be true to the shape and keep the curvature inside as well. The galvalium sheets which we use reflects about 80% of the heat. So you can uh, use very limited air conditioning and still be cool inside. And also it is made completely leak proof. So six years back, I renovated my dad's house. That was a nightmare because what I realized is even though you set out on a budget and a clear idea of what you want to do, you can never get it done because it takes so long for these construction projects to get over. So when I decided to build this new house, I wanted to build that use a technology which has got maximum automation in construction so that my reliance on labor is reduced. We explored uh, different uh, systems like gypsum paneling, uh, cold and hot rolled steels, and finally we came to EPS panel systems. Being a, a waterfront site, the one reason for choosing EPS panel was that it does not absorb moisture like other conventional materials like cement or uh, laterite blocks or uh, brick blocks. It is fire resistant 
heat resistant, very lightweight, very easy to install and brings down the cost also. So we have kept the material palette very simple, composite uh, panels made from rice husk for the external pathways and furniture. Mr. Daniel took a sample from the vendors and he put it in the water for almost 2-3 months to see whether it will actually work in the exterior. And we found out that it did not affect the material at all. The biggest cost in a house maintenance is power. So this house was built or designed in such a way by my architect with a very high ceiling and where the wind would flow across the house and the heat would get dispensed so that there was no necessity for an air condition. But what happened is with global warming, the overall temperature around the land itself was very hot. And plus the wet bulb temperature was high because of high humidity because we are staying closer to the lake. So you had no choice but to put an air condition inside. The walls that are built here are insulated with EPS. So there's no heat coming from outside inside and the glasses here was also using double glazed glass and laminated glass so that we protected the heat from coming in. We could reduce close to 50% usage of AC because of this technology. So when I put an AC, this had a possibility of increasing my cost of running the house. So to offset that, I set up a floating solar panel because of two reasons. One is you do not have a shade or a shadow and also the water below keeps the panel cooler. So now my weekend home is completely supported by the power that I generate from these floating solar panels. Both my husband and I grew up in farms way back in the 80s and we wanted to recreate the way of life we followed then. I live off the land and we wanted to recreate that in today's time uh, using uh, our technology. Self-sustaining starting with power, then went on to use rainwater. I decided to build a large tank and store the rainwater in this tank. When I built this uh, tank, I realized that you also need a water treatment plant because rainwater cannot be directly used. So we created a very low cost water treatment plant which will treat this water. So whenever I don't get water from the panjai, I process this water and use it. Once we started storing water, then I said, you know, we should use rainwater for everything. We set up a hydroponic plants here. So this is something which my wife does. We have our vegetables produced from this. And we use this same rainwater for the hydroponics. And hydroponics takes very little water. The only water that is lost is the evaporation. And the beauty of it is the entire house, uh, be it uh, for cooking, be it for our bathing purposes, we're using this water. Even the pool that we have, we are growing fish from this. I like fresh fish. But I said I should take to the next level and why not try live fish? My dream was whenever a friend comes, I could cast a fish right from the lake or uh, get it from the cage farm and then we could clean it up and you know do barbecue. Connecting with nature is about that. When you are able to be you know, with nature and you know, experience that nature with family and friends. This was built basically to meet with friends, families, to have everybody spend time together. It was essential that it was not, we wanted a three bedroom or a two bedroom house because you know we don't have people here with the objective of coming and staying here to sleep only. You know, it's basically to spend time together. Every space can transform at different times of the day and according to the needs. Uh, we have a free uh, living room that opens towards the deck. Also, the kitchen opening towards the deck. The deck is the heart of the design, where people can gather 
मे बी फॉर अ मिड नाइट बाबिक्यू और इवन फॉर अ क्वाइट योगा सेशन इन द मॉर्निंग Uh, on the onset, uh, when my husband uh, decided to build a vacant home, he also wanted to use his engineering skills to solve the problems of climate change, and actually create a prototype on how to adapt to the existing conditions. In that process, knowingly or unknowingly, we stumbled upon the fact that if we live aligned to nature, if we align ourselves to our truest version. and if we are honest enough to address the challenges around us uh, we can actually find peace and happiness